and welcome back to another Geek Lunch Meet. I'm your host Chris and I will bring you a quick, uh, quick news update um, and re reviews this week. Um, just carrying on from last week, I uh, talked about uh, the animated show Gremlin Secrets of the Mugwai. Um, that actually was announced, that's been renewed for second season, even though we haven't seen um, any footage at all from season one. Uh, the powers that be, uh, Warner Brothers are obviously happy with that. And uh, yeah, they've renewed that for second season um, already. So um, yeah, still no idea when uh, we're actually going to see season one. But uh, yeah, we'll be getting uh, at least two seasons of, uh, of, uh, of some Gremlins coming our way anyway. Now, sort of the big news this week was the announcement of the Spider-Man 3 uh, title. Um, now, they did this in a way that uh, we'll talk about in a minute. It hints a bit towards the multiverse again. Um, first of all, there were some social media updates from Tom Holland, uh, Zendaya, and uh, the kid that plays Ned, whose name escapes me. Um, they each posted up a, a title and we ended up uh, with these three titles. Now obviously teasing three separate titles um, is a bit strange, but it does, uh, it does fit in with this sort of hints we've had that uh, the multiverse is going to be uh, introduced um, in uh, in the next Spider-Man film, and then obviously lead into into Doctor Strange. Um, so obviously we've had the rumours that we're going to be seeing uh, the Spider-Men from the other movie franchises. Uh, something Tom Holland has come out and said uh, isn't true, but as I've said, he's not uh, massively reliable, um, and it wouldn't surprise me if they've told him to say that, so that all of the secrets doesn't um, don't spill out. Um, so as I've reported before, Jamie Foxx apparently is definitely back as Electro, and Alfred Molina is back as Doc Ock. So it would definitely indicate we're going to be seeing multiple um, multiple iterations of Spider-Man. Um, I'd say and so seeing the uh, title in this way uh, with uh, multiple uh, fake titles uh, does seem to fit in with that. And then a couple of days later, um, they released a little 30 second clip um, of the three of them uh, riffing on the fact that Tom Holland uh, is notorious uh, for always giving away uh, secrets uh, as he's done in the past. Um, and as they sort of their walking out of an office uh, discussing his uh, inability to keep a secret and they walk past a uh, notice board that has the title, uh, it has the actual title on the board, uh, which is this. So Spider-Man uh, No Way Home uh, will be coming to us. And now they've been a bit um, clever. It actually just says uh, on, uh, on it, coming Christmas uh, 2021. So they haven't actually committed to a date, which uh, is a very good idea. Uh, in the uh, in the times we're currently in, uh, I would expect the UK government announced their plans uh, during the week uh, to get us out of lockdown. I would suggest that we will probably hear some announcements shortly of uh, some release dates moving back slightly. Uh, I mean, Black Widow, it's already over like a year late. It was meant to come out, I think, in May. I suspect looking at it, if they're saying we're going to be completely out of lockdown, by June, I would suspect that may get pushed back a month. Um, so that's a potential billion dollar earner there. Um, and especially if that's one of the first big films that comes back when people are, you know, all the cinemas are re uh, reopened and people are happy to go back uh, to the cinema. I can imagine that's, uh, that's uh, people have been crying out for uh, for entertainment and content. And I suspect, uh, yeah, that's uh, definitely gonna be a huge, huge hit for Disney. Um, but yeah, I can see that moving back June, maybe even July, uh, but we'll see on that one. Also announced this week, uh, Loki, um, the series that's coming to Disney Plus, that uh, has been moved back slightly. That was coming out in May. Um, I suspect maybe that was coming out in May and they've moved it back maybe because of the date or say of Black Widow was put back to May. And I wonder if not so that it didn't clash with it. Uh, so June the 11th that we'll be getting Loki uh, on Disney Plus with Tom Hilston. So that literally gives us Next week is the final episode of WandaVision. Then there is a week's break. Then we get the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which I think is only a six part show. Then effectively May, um, there'll be no new um, live action Marvel content there. And then, um, yeah, then Loki will start in on, on June the 11th. So they're really, um, they're really um, sort of uh, ramping these up um, and getting them all out, I suppose. And I suspect with the pandemic, they've probably uh, had a chance to catch up uh, on some of the filming of that now. So I imagine, yeah, we're going to get like a probably quite a glut of stuff together. And then, then we might get a little break uh, before the sort of new stuff that they've started filming arrives. 
in a similar vein, they also announced that uh, May the 4th, obviously, which has become a sort of geek um, Star Wars day, or obviously May the 4th be with you, um, Star Wars Bad Batch, the new animated show, which we mentioned before, that is hitting Disney Plus um, on May the 4th. Uh, it carries on from the Clone Wars cartoons, featuring a group of clone soldiers. I'm not sure if they're going to be still following the uh, Emperor's commands, or uh, I suspect they may splinter off, otherwise you're just going to be following a bunch of bad guys going around. Um, so, yeah, I, I suspect they may... Uh, they may uh, change their allegiances um so yeah that's coming um hopefully it be good i'm not a mass i do like the clone wars but um the clones as as characters i'm not a huge fan um i'd rather have seen a, an animated series going in a different way um ming na wen is uh, playing fennec shand in it um, as she did in uh, the mandalorian season two so um yeah, I don't know how she fits into that, but um, yeah, there's obviously going to be more sort of bounty hunters and uh, mercenaries and things. So um, the trailer does look good, a lot of action. So yeah, we'll see what that is all about uh, coming up, say, May the 4th. So this week, uh, Star started on Disney+. Plus. Star is basically, um, in the States, you've got Hulu and various other streaming services. Um, we don't get them over here. Disney+, Plus uh, have added Star to, um, to their raft of uh, what they've got. Uh, of the content available in the UK and in uh, other places around the world. It's basically showing where where Disney bought out uh, Fox Studios. It's got a lot of that War the Fox stuff on there. It's basically stuff that isn't as family friendly as what Disney would obviously normally puts out on Disney Plus. You have to the first time you go on once you've um, once you updated your app um, to show the star stuff that uh, it will ask you to verify uh, your age and if you want to see um, um, all of that all of that content. Um, it just 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 obviously there's stuff on there that you wouldn't you know wouldn't want little kids watching um there's some stuff missing um the die hard films are on there except for die hard one um i can only assume there's some sort of rights issue i don't know if maybe i've got a feeling they were on amazon prime so i wonder if amazon prime still got the rights to the first one for some reason um i suspect uh that in uh, as we as we as we go on uh, new content will come on as uh, as licensing uh, agreements run out with other places. Uh, none of the Alien films are currently on there either, um, so I suspect we'll see them in the future. Uh, there's rumour they're going they're all being remastered in 4K. So um, yeah, that's probably one thing that's stopping them. Uh, you've got things like they've got all of Lost on there um, and various other TV shows. There is obviously some new uh, some original content on there, not very much at the moment, and also it will be the home of the Alien TV show. Um, when they start filming that we probably won't get that's probably a year or so, at least a year away um but yeah so um there's quite a lot of content on there um so yeah definitely check that out if you've got disney plus a sad news this week um covid has seen the demise of um yeah another um geek business the uh, cinefix um if you've not heard of it uh, cinefix is a magazine that started in 19 19- 80 um so yeah 41 years it's been going it is basically the bible for um the special effects industry it is absolutely crammed full of information on just about every it's covered like every major special effects movie since since the 80s um right up to now um and it's a shame to see it go um this is the first issue i ever bought which is issue 50 uh, which is from may 92 uh, which obviously features alien 3 yeah it's a real shame that it's uh, gone uh, the early issues are highly collectible um, go for quite a lot of money. They used to go for hundreds. eBay's brought the price down a bit, um, but they're still, if you can get some in decent condition, still uh, still worth quite a bit of money. It's one of the earliest ones I've got. This is issue 18, uh, which is the uh, Temp- Indiana Jones and Temple Doom issue. Um, the amount of information uh, packed in these um, is incredible. Uh, they sort of later, they became obviously as film, mostly uh, special effects industry moved on to computer graphics. Obviously a lot of the, um, information is very technical and a lot of it goes over my head um the earlier issues obviously was a lot of model making and stop motion and uh, uh photochemical effects is a lot more interesting but uh, yeah still good and still uh, yeah an absolute shame um that that has gone under um understandable the industry there isn't much uh, obviously product coming out they uh, said their obviously advertising revenue had dropped uh, considerably um yeah so a real shame uh, it looks like issue 172, I think it is, is going to be the final issue uh, and probably be a collector's item. But yeah, if you're a big fan of any particular movies that you that you love, you chances are there's probably a Cinefix issue. Um, so there's loads of them on eBay. Um, are definitely worth uh, checking out. Moving on to things I've seen this week. Um, 
a kind of rewatching of District 9, uh, the Neil Blomkamp uh, sci fi movie from quite a few years back. Um, interestingly, they have just announced, just before recording this, that he is working again on the script for District 10, the sequel um, with Charlotte Copley. Um, the thing with Neil Blomkamp, he has, uh, yeah, I said this before, that he's working on it, and obviously he has got a history of um, announcing projects projects that never come to fruition, such as his uh, Alien 5 script, which he had concept art for and everything, which looked really good, and uh, Robocop, a proper sequel to Robocop, um, which also then uh, disappeared. So, um, yeah, take a grain of salt for the moment, but um, yeah, hopefully um, he can get that off the ground. Uh, it would be great to see a continuation of that story, even though it does, it does hold up as a standalone film. It doesn't need a sequel as such, but um, I would be happy to see um, the return of Christopher Johnson and his prawn buddies and um, see what happens with that. Now, also this week, um, I watched Flora and Ulysses, uh, which is a, an exclusive to Disney+. Plus. Um, it's a new family movie. Uh, it is uh, about a young girl called Flora, uh, played by relative newcomer Matilda Lawler. Um, she uh, has a uh, estranged family. Um, her mother, played by Alison Hannigan uh, of Buffy fame, is a uh, romance novelist uh, who is uh, having writer's block. A uh, father who currently doesn't live with them is played by Ben Schwartz, who is the uh, absolutely fantastic uh, John Ralphio in Parks and Rec. He's a sort of struggling comic book artist as well. Um, to this scenario uh, comes a, a superhero um, in the form of uh, Ulysses, who is a squirrel. The squirrel uh, Ulysses, he doesn't talk, but um, he, his, his vocalisation is done by John uh, Cassier, who um, obviously um, you all know, and IMD IMDb tells us, uh, from uh, The Grinch, The Emoji Movie, uh, Despicable Me 3, Secret Life of Pets, Minions, Monsters University, uh, where he did uh, additional voices, obviously, um, The Simpsons, where he played uh, various animals, um, and uh, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle cartoon, where he played a character called uh, Dark Beaver. Um, not one I'm familiar with, uh, but yeah. Um, obviously, uh, joking aside, he was best known as, a, as the voice of the Crypt Keeper in the uh, Towns of the Crypt franchise. It's based on the children's book uh, by Kate uh, DiCamillo, and um, it, it really is a cut above uh, the average sort of um, kids' movie. Um, the script is, uh, is very quirky. Um, it's quite offbeat. Um, it's got... It's very witty and it made me laugh out loud numerous times um because ben schwartz uh, is uh, is excellent he doesn't quite get to go as mad uh, as he does in parks and rec but um on top of that as well you've got danny pudi who was uh, our bed in community uh, playing a uh, animal control officer who's trying to track down uh, this squirrel who he believes um has uh, rabies um which is uh, compounded by uh, a brilliant term by uh, kate uh Michucci, i think you pronounce her name uh, as a, word, a waitress in a diner um, who um, is also convinced that this squirrel is rabid. Uh, support from Bobby Moynihan playing uh, the owner of a comic book store um, that Flora uh, frequents. Uh, in fact, yeah, it's very uh, sort of gateway film uh, for comic books. Um, obviously, Disney using uh, it's uh, it's now a Marvel property a lot. Uh, Flora, uh, the film opens with Flora just talking about Wolverine and Silver Surfer. Uh, and there's lots of different references. Um, like that. Um, she's got a friend uh, who lives next door who's got hysterical blindness and um, who thinks it gives him, he thinks he's got powers like uh, like Daredevil, that he's got enhanced uh, hearing and a sort of echo location, uh, which obviously he doesn't and it mostly involves him just falling off things um, and it's very funny. And there's a psychotic cat as well um, that just constantly attacks Danny Pudi's uh, animal control officer um, and uh, uh, who, which is also brilliantly done. Um, so yeah, at the end of the day, it's uh, it's a great family entertainment. If you've got kids, uh, absolute no brainer. If you haven't got kids, um, it's a, yes, as I say, it's a cut above the rest. Um, if that, that's sort of a, I mean, the story is quite predictable. You know where you know exactly where it's going. It's a, um, it's no great surprises, but um, the way it gets there, um, it does sound in a very funny, um, very say quirky and offbeat way. Um, and at the end of the day, a uh, film. Uh, it's got a soundtrack that includes OK Go, MC Hammer, uh, Tom Jones, uh, Bill Withers. Uh, and Cat Stevens, um, you can't go wrong there. So that's it for me this week. Uh, just a quick news update. Uh, obviously, next week is uh, the last episode of One Division, so um, we'll probably take a look at that next time out, definitely. So uh, if you like what you've seen, if you could uh, go and subscribe to our channel, um, that will really help us out a great deal. Um, so until next time, eat geek and be merry.